G'day team. So have you ever had a dream where, I'm sure you've had a dream, but have you ever had a dream where in that dream, uh, I'm sure you have, there's some terrible shit going on. There's, it's somebody's trying to kill you, somebody's attacking you, or you're about to fall off a cliff, or something terrible happened to someone that you love, or whatever it is, there's some kind of pain, some kind of uh, imagined, but seemingly very real in the moment, uh, traumatic, catastrophic event going on in the middle of your sleep. And in the middle of your sleep, now remember what's really happening in the practical three-dimensional physical world is nothing. You're asleep, you're in bed, you're safe. That's Let's assume that's the situation anyway. But in the dream, you are not safe in the dream. Uh, there is a threat in the dream. There is imminent danger. And even though this is not real, your body doesn't know that it's not real. And so what your body does, it responds because your body can't differentiate between a perceived threat, uh, that is, I think I'm in danger, and there actually is a danger or there actually is a real threat. <clears throat> and this is important to know because this helps us understand a little bit the way that uh, our brain or our, our psychology, our thinking and our emotions and our physiology are intertwined. So when there is no threat, but I believe there's a threat, my body responds, that is heart rate, adrenaline, cortisol, norepinephrine, sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight, you know, breathing, all that stuff, everything st starts to switch on and elevate as though there's an actual threat, which is why we can be in the middle of what is from the outside looking in a very calm place in the middle of the night, there's no threat, there's no danger, the world is asleep or the world around you is asleep. Um, and all is well, but in the middle of this very fertile space up here, that all is not well. And so even though there is no legitimate danger or threat, uh, you are in the middle of an experience that is exactly that, an experience, not a reality, not a practical reality, but an experienced reality for you. Then you wake up. Then you wake up and you realize, oh, fuck, it was a dream. It was a dream and you go, thank God for that, right? Um, and you look around and you realize it's all good. I'm here. I'm safe. Uh, the world's not imploding. Nobody's got a tomahawk at the end of my bed. All is good. I am okay. Nonetheless, despite that awareness, despite that knowledge, despite that self-talk and that psychological kind of uh, awareness of what is and what isn't, what isn't, I'm not in danger. What is, I'm safe. Despite that, there's still an element of fear. There's still an element of anxiety. There's still an element of uh, emotional discomfort. And then on top of that, the third layer is the physiology, psychology, emotion, physiology. The third layer is the physiology. Now, despite the fact that all is well, you're not under threat, your body's going, get fucked. I'm staying like this because I'm not sure. So my heart rate, my blood pressure, my adrenaline, all of those indicators, all of those physiological indicators of stress are through the roof because your body doesn't know, this is key, your body doesn't know the difference between a perceived threat or a story and an actual threat. Actual danger and the story of danger. Why does this matter? Thanks for asking. This matters because we are often telling ourselves stories of doom and gloom and danger and threat on an hourly basis, some of us a 10 minute basis. Some of us are putting ourselves into a stress state via our stories, not our actual situation, circumstance or external reality regularly because of some underlying fear. Now, this is not a judgment or a criticism. This is about awareness and also, by the way, I'm not solving anything here. I'm not giving a cure. What I'm doing is I'm opening the door on awareness and understanding so that we can understand and we can acknowledge that emotion lives in the body. That fear lives in the body. Well, what does that mean? That sounds ridiculous. Well, here's the evidence. The evidence is you're now awake. You now have the knowledge that you are safe. You now have the awareness that there is no threat you have now have the understanding that there is no immediate problem. Nonetheless, your body is still in that stress state. And despite the fact that there is no problem, practically there is now a problem 
experientially for you because you can't control that. You can't turn that off immediately. So why do I share this? I share this because it's really good for us to understand the relationship and the inevitability of the interconnectedness and the constant interconnectedness of psychology, emotion and physiology. And the only place really that psychology and emotion and physiology operate in isolation is in textbooks. Because you, me, all of us, are all of it all of the time. There's a really interesting area of research called psycho, psycho neuroimmunology. Put your teeth in harps. Psycho neuroimmunology, some people call it PNI, which is the acronym. And that just talks about the relationship between what's happening in our head and our emotions and how healthy or how strong our immune system is. So there's a correlation between negative thinking and negative emotions and blah, 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 and our immune system being suppressed. So too, people that are happier and focus on positives, we're not talking about pretending, we're talking about being solution focused, we're talking about being optimistic consciously, we're talking about being glass half full, uh, we're talking about being strategic and recognising uh, what is and what isn't. We're talking about not turning a 1 out of 10 minor issue into an 11 out of 10 fucking catastrophe via our storytelling. So I just wanted to share this because I think sometimes we unconsciously get overtaken by this overwhelm of this story that becomes this physiological fucking overwhelming I know I used the word overwhelm twice. I just used it a third time. But this experience that kind of engulfs us. And so all change starts with awareness and acknowledgement. And, and, you know, so it's so interesting to know that you can have a dream that's completely manufactured by your mind, but it is actually experienced literally by your body. And we don't just do this when we're asleep, we do it when we're awake.